Okay. Well, here we are again. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Are, are yeah. We started? <laughs> we're, we're starting. Wait, wait, let's start over. Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> take four. We're, we're, learning, we're learning a lot in this process, so um, you're just going to have to be patient with us. One thing we know for sure is that um, this is new for us, and um, we're not professionals. It relates to video yeah, production. Yeah, really, I want one of the clicky things, because we need it. It's yeah. A, yeah. We, we started last week, and... The sound didn't record. I don't know what happened, but and we were gonna come back and finish, and then you fell out of a tree. So, yeah. so that's okay because yeah. the sound didn't record anyways. No, we're, <laughs> it didn't. So I mean, hopefully we're watching it. It shows it's recording now, and hopefully the video is yeah. working and won't cut off on us halfway through. Yeah. So that's that's good. No, but uh, yeah, no. This is video one. It's great to great to have this time with you and. Um, thanks for being patient with us as we work through this. Hopefully each week we'll get a little bit more dialed in. And um, as you can see, hopefully on the board behind us, that we're kind of looking at today at the history of our denomination. We'll talk about what our denomination is, as well as how we as a church um, got involved in the EFCA and kind of our history here in Yakult. And, uh, and then Bryce will talk a little bit about uh, membership as, as, as we see it in scripture and um, in our Bibles. So so it'll be fun. It'll be good. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And Yeah. Do you want to pray? And... I do. Let's okay. pray. Lord, just give us the words to communicate with our brothers and sisters and just uh, pray that it would be a blessing to them to learn more about mm -hmm. the history of the Evangelical Free Church and our church here in Yakul and also membership and what it is, why, why is it important, and um, just pray this would be enjoyable time of learning about new topics that might be new to people, and mm -hmm. so as always, Lord, just pray that your name be glorified and lifted up in all these things, and um, we're thankful to be able to be here um, with you in your work, with our brothers and sisters walking through this process, so bless it, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So let's start by talking about the history of the EFCA. And some of you are like, I didn't even know we were part of a denomination. We covered this a little bit in our intro class, but the EFCA is the denomination in which we are a part of, and it stands for the Evangelical Free Church of America. And the actual name really does a good job at kind of describing what the EFCA is, what it stands for. And um, just want to kind of break it down. The E in EFCA is for evangelical. And what that basically means and is that as, as followers of Christ, our, our authority is the Bible. And it is, it is where we get our marching orders. And so that's why we preach through the Bible um, through, through um, on Sundays. We pretty much go verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And that's the primary diet. Um, it's called expositive preaching, but it's ultimately um, we take our authority from the scriptures, and and um, and that differentiates us as a evangelical church than other churches. There's a lot of other churches that take their authority from their priests or from their pastors or from um, other other leadership, uh, rather or more importantly than um, the scriptures. And we, we we put the Bible up at the top. And um, also evangelical means that we believe that faith in Jesus Christ is the only means by which someone is saved. We're not saved by our good works, our good deeds. We're not saved by our religious background. We're not saved by our theological um, education. We're, faith, we're saved um, by faith in Christ and Christ alone. And um, our righteousness comes from Christ. And so... Um, that is that is core to what it means to be evangelical. We're we're people of the book, and we place no trust in ourselves, no trust in anything or anyone other than the finished work of Jesus Christ. Um, when it comes to the F in EFCA, the F stands for free, and you say, well, free from what? Well, um, free from two things primarily. Does that mean um, we don't have to pay to be members? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's not like Costco. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you don't. It's it's free to be a member. It's we'll actually talk about what it, what it takes to be a member as we go through. But no, the free, <laughs> the free is um, we're free from governmental control. That the government um, does not have authority um, or control in how we conduct ourselves, how we worship what in which we share, which we preach, which we evangelize. We are free from governmental control. And um, you have in the appendix of your book a little bit of the history of the EFCA going all the way back to really 300 AD um, when persecution was halted in the church because the Roman emperor Caesar, no, I'm sorry, Constantine, Mm -hmm. he, he became a Christian. And all of a sudden, Christians weren't being persecuted um, and, and that's a good thing, except for as time went along, um, the, the church and, and, uh, the state became so intertwined that you were persecuted if you weren't, uh, doing all, whatever their prescribed way of being a Christian was, which yeah. might not have even been biblical. Yes. You had to fall in line with, yep. with, with that. Yeah. And so, so really the free church, um, was, was born out of, in some senses, and even Protestantism, which is what we are, we're Protestants. Um, um, the root of Protestantism is protest. We, we push back against a heartless governmental controlled religion. And, and so again, go, go to the appendix and read about the history of the EFCA and some of the specifics because it's pretty neat. But we're free from governmental control. And that certainly goes for today. I mean, there is definitely, um, there's talk all the time. I hear it. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's just my line of work or our line of work. People say, what are you going to say when the government says you can't preach this or say those like it, things? It doesn't say the government won't try to control the church, but it is separated Mm-hmm. from the government official, yeah. officially, which yep. limits some of those. And it leaves the decision of, well, we should obey our government, but when, you know, at what point yeah. are, do you obey God and not man? Mm-hmm. Those kind of things. Yeah, and we saw, we saw that yeah. through COVID, a lot, a lot of that through COVID too. And, but ultimately, you know, we want to honor, mm-hmm. obviously we want to honor our, our governing authorities. Scripture tells us that, but at the same time. Um, it keeps that, just that division keeps the church healthy yeah without the meddling yep. of the government yep um, the other part of being a free church not just governmental control are we free from but we're also actually free from denominational control which sounds a little bit funny because the efca is our denomination but um, we as free churches um, and a lot of times that's been historically what the efca churches have been called they're just called the free church um, we're the free church of Yakult, um, and that's kind of what we call each other. But basically, that is um, our our ethic or our value as as a free church is that we we network with other churches in our denomination, but but the free church doesn't dictate for us how we conduct um, our worship, how we structure our leadership, how we go about expressing the gospel here in our neck of the woods we're pretty much left alone there's no there's no um, oversight or control from our headquarters in minneapolis saying you as um, the free church of yakult need to do this we're free from or, yeah. there are, are, are both our bylaws and our constitution as a free church say that we are autonomous meaning we we have the freedom to express the mission of the gospel and the evangelism and the discipleship of of um, our people in, in the body however we feel god is calling us to do and um, but you think well why are we part of a denomination then well the reason we're part of a denomination is because we're definitely better together and in our little southwest washington region uh, we have about eight other efca churches in in our area and once a month, you know, Pastor Bryce and I, we get together with those other church pastors and some elders and staff, and we get together, have breakfast, we pray. Um, we just came back from this last week, or I did, um, our annual conference. Um, I serve as the treasurer of our denomination in, the, in, this, in this region. 
and um, you know both both Bryce and I are are going through the ordination process. That is a that is a process that comes through a denomination. So there's there's networking and affiliation. And I'll tell you, as I pastored in a church um, for nine years as a youth pastor that was a non-denominational church, and I could just tell you from that time that church is now no longer in existence because it went through some difficulties through COVID and it didn't have support um, from other like-minded brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. So and like some of that support we'll get to in our next video, which comes by the statement of faith. So it's, they're not governing our local church, but there are helpful fences or boundaries for the yeah. gospel yeah. that are in place. Like these are, this is the statement of faith that we all agree on and it protects the gospel. And so there's support like that, but they're not interested in our day-to-day -day decisions of how to run the church mm -hmm. and there's freedom there. So, um, so it's a good partnership, like you said, yeah. um, with some support and help and, mm -hmm. and fences for the gospel and what mm -hmm. we believe as a denomination. But yep. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, EFCA, uh, the C is for church. We'll talk more about um, and break down church when we get to those doctrinal, um, those doctrinal statements in, in the next few videos. And the A stands for America. So we, we have um, a, a diverse background. And again, I'll just say, go, go read the couple pages in the appendix of your of your manual there to kind of get uh, some of the, the the longer range history but that's a that's a bit of um a picture of what the efca is and and um, why we're a part of it and in in a little bit when after bryce talks i'll kind of share how how we got connected with the efca here in yakult and where our church got its start so um so yeah so should i Take over. Shift yes. Yeah. To, we'll go from shift we'll to go from this membership to this. in the Bible. Membership in the Bible. Yep. Sure. So this is a membership class, and uh, you, you may have a good grasp on what membership is in the local church and the Bible's view of it, or you might not. It might be new to you. So there's probably everything in between. Um, but the Bible does say quite a bit about being involved in the local church, and it might not use the word membership it comes from a certain verse actually where it does say members one of another paul uses that language but if we step back a little bit and look at the whole picture of the bible we'll see that this idea of fellowship and being in fellowship with one another is from the very beginning man and woman are created in the image of god we're created for relationship and so even in genesis 2 8 right after adam and Eve sinned by eating the fruit, we read that they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And so there was a shift from walking with God and being open and vulnerable and just in that intimate fellowship with the Lord who created them to hiding themselves. So there was a rift in the relationship and sin entered in, death entered in, and you find them hiding themselves from the Lord, which is tragic, but this is now the fallen world we find ourselves in. But, but it shows us from the very beginning that being in relationship with God was, was essential. And um, if we go a little farther into Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3, God calls Abra Abram, who would become Abraham later on, to build his people, the people of Israel. And so uh, in Genesis 12, he, God speaks to Abraham and calls him and call, says, Go out from your country and your kindred from your father's house, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless those who bless you and those who persecute you or curse you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And so there's just this relational aspect still, like God's building a people for himself. And so you could say there was a membership in the people of Israel that if you were born from a Jewish family, you were a child of Abraham and you had membership in this community of faith that was the Israelites. So if we jump real quick to the New Testament in Galatians, 
uh, chapter three, it just makes an interesting link between um, between this calling of Abraham and being children of Abraham. There you go. You got your Bible. <laughs> nice. So yeah, Galatians chapter three, verses seven and nine is just um, linking that idea of being children of Abraham to all believers in Jesus Christ. So uh, chapter three, verse seven starts out. Now then it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham and the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. And so no longer is it just for the, the gospel just for the Jewish people, but if we are believe in Jesus Christ and have that faith, we are counted as children of Abraham. So we become a part of this body of believers around the world from all time. Um, so it's for all believers in Jesus. But the thing is, is that God has designed that this membership play out in a local community. So it's true that we are members of the whole church across the world, all time. Like you talked about Martin Luther in like the 1500s in the Reformation and um, Constantine in the 300s. And so like just over thousands of years, we are family with those believers that go before us. Mm -hmm. But um, that would is what we would call the universal church or Maybe the true church, I, b I believe our statement of faith uses the phrase the true church to mean all believers of all time around the world. But, but there's also the local church, which is played out here in Yakult Community Church in Yakult. This is one expression of the church here in Yakult. And so um, membership, as we're talking about it, has to do with membership in the local church. So we are all automatically members through faith in Jesus in the universal church um, with all of these believers of all time. But as we talk about membership here, we're talking more of membership in this church family right here. And so we see that play out in the New Testament as well. So in Acts 13, if, if you remember, the believers were gathered in the church in Antioch and they were praying and fasting and the Holy Spirit said to them to set aside Saul and Barnabas to be ministers, uh, missionaries to the Gentiles. And so um, there was this fellowship of prayer and fasting there in Antioch where they could hear the Holy Spirit speak to them and be led in a certain direction. To, you've sent some of their best uh, preachers even out to be, to be missionaries. And so unless you're in membership with each other in a local church, you, you won't have that experience of um, the leading of the Holy Spirit in your community as you worship together and seek the Lord together. Mm. Um, Titus 1.5, so Paul's writing to Titus, a fellow worker. He says, um, This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained in order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. So did you know that Harry is from Crete? Wait, that, yeah. That's awesome. So we... Yeah. You might not know Harry. You guys might not know Harry, but he go, he's a part of our church body here. He's, he's from Crete. So Titus was installed as an elder in Crete to put what remained in order and appoint elders as Paul directed him. And so there's this biblical idea of, of elders as leading the church and appointing elders and governing the church and this local church in Crete had Titus and whatever other elders that he chose to govern the church. And so um, this is just kind of the framework starting to kind of be fleshed out about membership. And we're not going to go too deep into it here. It's just kind of an overview of like, where does the idea of membership even come from? But just in the book of Hebrews, there's a lot of emphasis on sharpening one another and keeping each other accountable and those things. So those are kind of things that you can't do unless you're committed to one another. Mm -hmm. So membership is largely about committing to each other to for each other's good. Mm -hmm. It's a means of grace just that God uses in the church. So think about Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. It says, 
and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you say, see the day drawing near. But it sounds like some were, were neglecting to meet together. I th I'm afraid that probably happened to lots of people through COVID when they get used to doing church at home in their, in their house, but then get out of the habit of meeting together with other believers. So mm -hmm. there's an emphasis there on on that face-to-face -face kind of fellowship with other believers. Mm -hmm. And the other warnings, like Hebrews 3, 12, and 13, I won't read it all, but it's it's a warning for, to just be careful of, of an unbelieving heart, of sin in your life that would lead you to fall away from God. Exhort one another every day. So you can't, you can't grow in the faith like that unless you are in a commitment with other believers where you could exhort one another and challenge each other. You see a brother stumbling or do, going down a dangerous path and be able, in a place of relationship where you could warn, warn them and uh, maybe turn them back and save them from stumbling and, and from unbelief. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the, the biblical reasons or importance for membership and what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when, when, when you look at... Um, the, the word in scripture for church is the word ecclesia. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it's, it's like 111 times it shows up in the New Testament. And like 97 of those times, it's, it's, it's a specific, um, it's used specifically for a gathering of people in a specific town or a specific mm -hmm. place. Like I've just, I've got Ephesians open here and, and, um, Paul says he's apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus. And so there's this, this strong sense that there's these local gatherings of, of brothers and sisters to do the things that you just talked about, to, yeah. to challenge each other, to encourage each other, to, to pray for one another, um, to, to exhort one another. You know, um, yeah, there's so many ways God uses us yeah. in each other's lives to help us grow. And yeah, and it's I, I, I'm glad you brought up that distinction because you have the, yeah, you do have the church universal or the the, the, the true church. Um, but but that's not to the neglecting of a local body of committed believers um, that we're a part of. And so that's that's just kind of goes to why membership is important, why it matters. And um, yeah. Yeah, I mean you're you talked about doing expository preaching and mm -hmm. you've been going through acts for a few months now mm -hmm. and uh, like as as the church starts to spread out from jerusalem uh you'll just see that they plant churches like in antioch or in all the towns that they go to they they leave, they raise up elders who can lead the church mm -hmm. and they put in a leadership structure and and it's just a huge thing that we see happening in the new testament as the mm -hmm. early church gets started is that the importance of the local church in each location yeah yeah, pretty awesome. Yep. Okay. Well, good. So now I, I'm curious about our local church here. Like, uh, when did, when did yeah. Yakult? So when did Yakult get started? Get started? So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun story when you think of Yakult's um, history and, and why it got started. So you actually go back to, um, you go back to the early 1950s um, to, to kind of get the, the, the beginnings of what would become Yakult Evangelical Free Church or the Evangelical Free Church of Yakult, which we've since changed our name to Yakult Community Church. Um, but um, that happened early in the 1950s because there was, there was faithful brothers and sisters, part of that church, um, church universal and church local, but there wasn't a church here in Yakult. And so they would they would drive down to Charter Oak off at of 299th down there, and that's another evangelical free church. And um, they found that um, they, they made connections there at that church, and they started to, one of these individuals was, and I'm unclear, did they, they either had their own bus or they borrowed a bus from the school district, and they would bring it up on Sundays and go around Yakult and gather as many kids as they could, and drive them down for Sunday school. And they did that for a number of years to take these kids from Yakult, dirt roads back then, no no pavement. Um, and they would take these kids down to Sunday school at Charter Oak and 
And, um, and then it was um, shortly thereafter, they, in, in the mid-1950s, uh, they, uh, they rented some, some space in the nearby grocery store and, in town here and um, started holding their own services. And they did that for the while, still kind of under the, the support of Charter Oak. And then in 1961, I believe the, the church um, formed um, and initiated so, Evangelical Free Church of Yakult. Yeah, that's what it was called when I first came here, like, oh gosh, 30 years ago, about 30 years ago. But That's right, still, you, you've been here we, a long time. Yeah, I was 14 when I fir- we first yeah. moved, in, moved here, but it was still the Evangelical Free Church of Yakult. But that's quite a mouthful to yeah. say. So it was 1961 that it came into existence. When did the EFCA originally, as a denomination, which is, start? Which is great. In 1950. Okay, so it was so, just well, the EFCA, just 10 yeah, years before the denomination yeah. started. And, and it started in 1950 um, when, when the, the Danish and the Norwegian mm. um, evangelical free churches um, j- joined together. And so that's when... So okay. that's when it that's when the EFCA, the Evangelical Church of America, began. So, so um, yeah, it's and I don't know I don't know how long Charter Oak's been around as I've been getting ready well, for this. Pretty close, pretty close to the beginning of the dom- denomination. Yeah, yeah, very close, very close. So I imagine I, you probably know the history a little bit better than I do, but um, I imagine that that beginnings of the EFCA, if it's coming from the the use of the Norwegian and the Swedish. Um, free churches merging mm-hmm. and and that there is a, a history there you you already went through the the history of the EFCA and what it means to be evangelical and free and but I imagine those like those countries had a, a state government Lutheran church mm-hmm. that they were probably you know breaking away from for the sake of the gospel and free worship mm-hmm. um, as well before they merged to become the EFCA mm-hmm. so but that's interesting that we it was really only what, 11 years maybe yeah. from the founding of the d- denomination yeah. that Yakult came into existence. Mm-hmm. Yakult yeah. Free uh, Evangelical Free, free Church, Church of Yakult. Yakult. Yep. Got it. Yeah. So Yakult Community yeah. Church, that's a lot easier yeah. to remember. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, if you've you heard us, we, we'll say it often, you know, we talk about it uh, pretty regularly how um, how children's ministry is and, and youth ministry is is a, such a high priority in this body because it began with with ministry to, to, to kids in this this area and that's never that's never stopped same thing with missions missions has always been a major portion or part of the energies of this church body and uh, from the beginning and it's we, we, we keep it that way um, today as well so so yeah, um, I, I think that's I think that covers about what we were going to talk about in week one. Anything else that you can think of? Man, I think we're. I think that's that's pretty good. I mean, we're in a uh, another transition phase with the new building coming and getting yeah. ready to finish that. But there's been lots of steps in that process from the, yeah. this church being built finally. And yeah, to that's, the, that's a good point. The, the yeah. steps with from 61, that's when they broke ground and built what we call our chapel. And, um, and then in the mid eighties, they, they added on again with the kitchen um, mm-hmm. and some of the classroom spaces. Yeah. And then it was in the nineties the, the was like the, the the gym, sanctuary, which is the sanctuary, sanctuary now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so and you're it's right. It's neat to see God's faithfulness just kind of steady over time, blessing and providing for yeah. uh, the church here. So yeah. may that continue, may the gospel continue to be proclaimed and be faithful, yeah. be a faithful church here, and just keep that, that growth happening. Yep, is awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, as we wrap up, one thing um, we didn't mention at the beginning, and it'll probably play a more key role in the next few videos that you watch as we walk through the different points of doctrine, but um, make sure to be taking notes, and you, you got a booklet there. Take Just jot down any notes um, uh, as we cover each of those, those areas of doctrine, and then also write questions down that you might have if questions come up. 
um, because I know that's we would love to answer those or one of the elders would love to answer any questions that you might have at some point in the near future and um, and uh, yeah I think the other things make sure to look in your booklet there's a checklist for week one I think there's some reading to do in that checklist yeah. and uh, schedule an appointment with the pastor an elder to contact the office yeah. is that right yeah just contact the office and, yeah and they'll get you set up with um, an elder interview it's yeah. just a you know just to get to know um, it'll probably be someone that stays in touch over time too yeah so yep so anyway uh, I think I think that's all all right God bless yes yeah all right <laughs>